Raises. 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 Raise. Good afternoon. Isang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Can you greet the person beside you? Welcome. Welcome to FECCLA. And welcome to our new venue, uh, the youth venue. And I'm so blessed uh, to see our very youthful song leader a while ago. Uh, talagang magets po ang kanya po mga inawit at ang kanyang style ang kanyang pagbit ng worship. Thank you, Pastor, for leading us. Pastor Robert, for leading us. And uh, there's only one word that comes to mind and I, I see him leading. It's uh, the word bombastic. That bombastic uh, uh, praise and worship. This afternoon, we will be completing a series on giving. And I've entitled uh, our message, or God's message, The Giving of a Disciple. Okay? Can you read, please? Actually, the message this afternoon could be summarized by this. This is the central proposition of our message this afternoon. What we give reflects the importance of the recipient. A husband uh, was choosing a gift for his wife's birthday and uh, he went to a perfume store because his wife was fond of perfume. And uh, he talked to the sales lady and said, uh, could you give me uh, a per... Uh, he gave the description of the perfume. And when he saw the cost, he saw that it was a house and their house. And so the husband said, uh, could you give me something more uh, cheaper or less in cost? So the sales lady brought out another perfume and the husband saw that it cost 500 dirhams. And so the husband said, uh, do you still have uh, anything that goes below 200 dirhams? And the sales lady brought out a perfume worth 50 dirhams. And still the husband was scratching his head. And he said, could you bring me something cheap? And the sales lady, who was by this time exasperated, brought out a big mirror and showed it to the husband, to the married man. What we give reflects the importance of the recipient. There was a farmer whose farm was on the brink of uh, bankruptcy. So, malakit nang mabankrap yung kanyang farm. And he only had a cow left in his farm. And he was spinning all his hopes and dreams and future on this cow. And so he said, Lord, how can you bless me? Please bless, bring me back the blessing in my farm. And so the farmer learned that his cow became pregnant. And not only pregnant, but it was pregnant with uh, two baby cows, which is really something unusual because usually cows give birth only to one, uh, one cow. So the farmer was ecstatic. He was very happy. And he said, thank you, Lord, for your blessing. But he said, the situation of my cow is a little bit dangerous because there is a possibility that uh, the mother cow would die giving birth. 
So again, he prayed and asked, Lord, if it is possible, give me a blessing that the cow would deliver its two babies without any incident, and normally and naturally. And if that happens, Lord, I will give you one cow as a thanksgiving. And so the day arrived, the cow gave birth, gave birth to two healthy cows, two healthy baby cows. And then the farmer was so happy, he said, thank you, Lord. Yes, I will give you one cow. The following day, the farmer woke up to discover that one of the baby cows had died the night before. Okay, so namatay. And so he said, Lord, I'm really sorry, but your cow died last night. <laughs> what we give reflects the importance of the recipient. So how should a disciple give? Now we will be looking at the life of I wonder if you would uh, consider her a disciple because according to a definition of a disciple, a disciple is someone who follows Christ, who has surrendered his life to Christ and follows Christ wholeheartedly. Now in the Bible we find, of course, you're very familiar with the 12 disciples. But aside and apart from the 12 disciples, there were others who were following Jesus around during his ministries. Or three years of ministries, and one of those uh, uh, prominent uh, disciples or followers of Christ were women. And one of these women uh, was Mary Magdalene. And we will be looking at her life and trying to glean some of the principles that we can learn about how a disciple should really give. O kung paano ba talaga magbigay at isa pong tagapasunod, tagasunod ni Cristo. Now, we will be looking across the Gospels, Luke, John, Mark. We will be looking at the life of a woman named Mary. Now, some scholars would say, later you will discover that, uh, some would say that there were two different Marys, Mary Magdalene and Mary of Bethany. But regardless, if this was one Mary or two Marys, we still can learn from the way they followed the Lord Jesus Christ. So how should a disciple give? First of all, he should give. He or she should give with no reserve. What does it mean? In John chapter 12, verse 3, and please read with me, then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet, and wipe his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. No reserve. Meaning, it's giving without conforming to the crowd or the expectation of the crowd. Now, sometimes we don't realize but we practice a double standard when it comes to giving. And one case in point is that as parents, we want the best for our children. Amen? Amen. And sa Pilipinas, ito po ay uh, very prevalent sapagkat pag tinignan ng magulang, when, when a parent look at his child and he says, you are so intelligent, matalino ka na, mag-abogado ka, or mag-inhinyero ka, or mag-doktor ka. So, a parent, when looking at his child, will say, you are intelligent. I think you deserve to be a doctor, an engineer, and, or a lawyer. And then, if a parent looks at a child that is relatively less, less, have less skills and abilities than the rest of his brother and sisters, he would say, Ano? Mahina ka sa man. Mahina ka sa English. Pastor ka na lang. <laughs> See, the double standard. And sometimes we take this as a joke, but it's really, it's really happening. You know? And we look at the life of Mary and how she gave. 
and we see that she gave something extra extravagant and out of the ordinary. Now, the pure nard was a fragrant oil from the roots and stems of an aromatic herb from northern India. Okay, so the perfume, which was pure nard, it was a fragrant oil from northern India. It was an expensive perfume. Mahal po siya. And it was imported and sealed in alabaster boxes or flasks. Because it was discovered at the time that this was the best possible way of preserving the perfume. And they were only opened on very special occasions. And scholars say that the bottle or the, the, the flask of alabaster that Mary poured out on the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's something out of the ordinary because in those days, people usually walked to their destinations. Okay? May mga mayaman, may mga chariots sila. But the common people of that day, they were used to walking and walking on dirt roads. So, during the time, there were not a lot of paved roads. And you would imagine na yung mga paako nila ay uh, nalagyan ng puti, o nalagyan ng dumi, o nalagyan ng kabo. And the best possible way of showing respect to a visitor is, is when a visitor comes to your house, is you have the servants clean. Wash the feet of your visitors before giving them a meal. But Mary did something more extraordinary, extravagant. Instead of using ordinary water, instead of using um, a cloth to wipe the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, she used perfume to wash the feet, and she used her own hair to wash the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, during this time, this would have been considered a scandal. It would have been considered a scandal. But remember that this woman was doing something very extravagant and very extraordinary. And scholars, the reason why a lot of them, there were two things. The first thing was that during the time, they were very mahinhin, you know? Uh, very, uh, a woman cannot just go in and touch a man. And the second thing was the, uh, the cost of the perfume. The cost of the perfume, to give you an idea, was it was equivalent to one year wages, okay? And let, let's just imagine that in this country, what would be a regular wage for the month? Okay, let's spin it down at 2,000 dirhams a month. Pagpalagi lang po natin at 2,000 dirhams a month. Okay, if you multiply it by 12, how much would that be? Mahina ako sa mat, kaya tinigit ako. 24,000, okay? If you convert that to Philippine peso, that would be how much? Okay. Okay, almost 300,000 pesos. 288,000 pesos to be exact. That was how expensive this bottle or flask of alabaster perfume of pure nard was. Mary was willing to give the best for the Lord. And so we can assume that if she had something more better to give, she would have given it. She gave without reservations. Now, David was called a man after God's own heart. In Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And why? Why do you think David, or God himself called David a man after his own heart? In Acts chapter 13, verse 22 says, because he was always willing to do what God wanted him to do. But if we look at the life of David, we see that not only was David willing to do what God wanted him to do, he was doing it in such a way that it was an all-out way of doing what God wanted him to do. Hindi lang siya sumunod. Talagang grabe yung kanyang pagsunod. In all-out victory in battle, all-out victory in worship. Remember the incident when he was worshiping God? 
Naalala ko nga si Rivin when I, when I saw Pastor, uh, you know, giving his best about it. Like, kung, kung si David, pinunin niya pa, he, he, he uh, tore out his clothes. Eh, talagang nagubad talaga siya sa, sa sobrang all out niya na mag-worship kay God. And this was the way, or this is the way, I believe that not only was David a man after God's own heart, but because he was willing to do what God wanted him to do. But he was willing to do what God wanted him to do in a way that was all out. And I come to think of myself, and I think, minsan, kaya hindi tayo nakakausan o nakakagalaw at lumalago, is because we still reserve something for ourselves. We say, Lord, akin to, lahat na binigay ko na sa iyo, ito pa kukunin mo. Can you relate with me? May mga bagay pa tayong itinatabi para sa ating mga sarili. And sometimes, we say, Pastor, huwag mo kaming pilitin sa ministry. Si Lord ang magsasabi at magpokonlip sa amin kung kailan at kung saan. But I'm telling you, brothers and sisters in the Lord, ministers and pastors are put here to remind everyone we were placed here to remind everyone, including ourselves, that when we do the will of God, we do it in such a way that it is all out. And there will always be reasons not to. There will always be reasons not to. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, remember the, the, the incident of the rich man and Lazarus. Remember when the rich man was still alive, he was living the life. And Lazarus was eating out of his scraps, out of the scraps of his table. Remember that incident in the Bible? And when they died, the situation was reversed. The rich man was in hell, and Lazarus, healed of all his sores, was in the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man said, would you please ask Lazarus to just even dip the tip of his finger and even just a drop of water on my tongue. That was how grabe ang kanyang pinagdadaanan. And then he said, Abraham said, there's a big gap and we cannot cross over there, we cannot cross over here. And finally, the rich man said, could you send Lazarus back to warn my brothers about this. And you know what Abraham said? He said, even if the dead shall rise, if they will not believe. Brothers and sisters, if we do not believe, kung wala din sa atin yung motivation, kahit mabuhay pa ang patay, and that is exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. He has risen from the dead. And if we do not believe, then there is nothing else for us. Our way of giving always baffles others who do not understand the reason why we give. And why do we give? We give not because we expect more blessings, like what, what we saw a while ago. We give because we have already been blessed. We go directly to the source. We do not rely only on the daily blessings. So no reserve giving without conforming to the crowd. The second principle of giving is that when a disciple gives, he gives without any return, without, without thinking of any return. Now in Mark chapter 14 verse 3 it says, could you please read with me all together now? While he was in Bethany, retiring at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the Leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, made of pure lard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Remember in the Philippines, I wonder if, if here we, we practice. Okay, no return is giving without considering the cost. Giving without considering the cost. When we give with no return, it means we give without considering 
the cost. It means that there is a no return, no exchange policy. Take note that there is a warning to count or consider the cost when we build a building. In Luke chapter 14, verse 28. But whenever we choose to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever we make a choice to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, it would always seemingly appear that the cost is so high. The cost is so high. Remember the rich young ruler when he was challenged by the Lord Jesus Christ to follow him, he said to sell all his possessions. And the rich young ruler or the rich young businessman was not able to do it. Why? Because if we look at giving in the perspective of what we have now, it would seem so costly. But if we look at what we have gained through Christ, kung titignan po natin kung ano po yung ating pong napakanyabangan o kung ano po yung meron po tayo dahil kay Kristo, ano po yung meron po tayo? What is it that we have because of Christ? Let me help you out. We have, first of all, we have forgiveness of sins. That in itself is a big thing, a great thing. Because in the Bible, forgiveness of sins means healing of physical sicknesses and ailments. That's why when the Lord Jesus Christ heals, He doesn't say, you are healed. But rather, He says, your sins are forgiven. We have forgiveness of sins. And not only that, there is another added bonus. We have salvation from hell. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, God became a man, and He was sinless. He took the sin of the world upon Himself. Because if we die, we cannot die for the sin of others. We can only die for the sin of our, for our own sins. Even if we love the person, even if we love our mother, our father, our husband, or our wife, or our sister, or our brother, or our niece, or sin man, we cannot pay for his sins. Why? Because when we die, we pay for our own sins. But the Lord Jesus Christ, who was sinless, and he was a man, he was 100% God and 100% man, he died. He took the sin of the world upon himself. He was sinless. He descended into the depths of hell and he rose again because he was God. He overcame death. He said, O oh, oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? And because of that, we who surrendered our lives to Christ, we now have what? Salvation from hell. And not only that, it even gets better. We have eternal life in the presence of God Himself. Imagine that and there's, the Bible attests to a lot of unimaginable things. No eyes has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for those who love Him and are His own. It doesn't end with that, brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I thank God for this last part. Our bodies will be changed. Who among you now or who amongst us are experiencing a lot of pain, a lot of suffering in our physical bodies? Siguro lahat po tayo dito meron at meron tayong ibinadaing sa ating mga katawan. And this is what we call the SOA. You know what SOA means? Signs of aging. <laughs> S-O-A. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, did you know? We look. Okay, we look at magazines, okay? We look at media. And we look at all these beautiful people. But did you know that even models, even beautiful people, even actors, actresses, people who appear on the cover of magazines, I read an article once that said that even these beautiful people, they experience a lot of insecurity. Imagine that. Matatanggad na sila. Ako nga, matatanggad nga lang sana ako. Masaya na ako. Pero sabi na lang yung thesis, 
Baka hindi ko daw siya pinansin mo ako yung So praise God. At saka isang advantage pa nun, see, when I stand here, the LCD projector doesn't catch the top of my head. And that is an advantage, amen? But really, you know, there will come a time, especially for those who, who are experiencing extreme physical pain and, and were born with, the, with physical disabilities or even mental disabilities. Grabe. We will be receiving a glorified body. Amen? We can end with this. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, and I can say, is anything worth exchanging for all these things that God has given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ? Nothing. Kaya wala lagi natin bukang pibig. Walang pwede, wala tayong pwede ipagpanin sa ginawa ng Diyos sa atin. Ito lang po yung kanyang mga ginawa. But when we look at ourselves, when the rich young, young ruler look at his riches and the Lord Jesus Christ said, you can follow me if you give all of those away. And what was the rich young man's response? He went away shaking his head. Why? Because he was thinking that the cost of his fortune was too much in exchange for these things. But when we look at them in the right perspective, we see that nothing really can exchange for the amount, for the value of what we have already received through the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we give Him a clap of ring, please? In the Christian life, there has always to be a point of no return. Point of no return. Let me give you two case in point. In 711 AD, a general by the name of Tariq ibn Ziyad, he was a Muslim, invaded Spain. And there was only 7,000 of them against 10,000 or 10 times their number. And they arrived by ship to invade Spain. And his soldiers were discussing who would be left behind to guard the ships and who would go to invade Spain. But Tariq Ibn Ziyad said, burn all the ships. And the reason why this general said, burn all the ship, ships, is that there will be no point of return. It's either they fight for victory or they perish. It's either they conquer or they perish. And because of that, they were able to overcome armies 10 times their size. And the result was that for 800 years, Spain was ruled by Muslims. Another example was Hernan Cortes. In 1519 AD, he invaded Mexico. And the same thing happened. They arrived by ship. And there was a few of them, 500 soldiers, against a lot of Mexicans. And again, they instructed the soldiers to burn their ships. And because of that, they had to fight for their life. There is a certain point in our life, brothers and sisters, the Lord. This is what we call the point of prayer. When we have surrendered our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, like what Mary did when she broke, Remember, she did not only pour out from the flask, but she broke it. Meaning to say, even if she wanted to, to leave something uh, behind for herself, she could not because yung lagayan was already broken. And it's in times when we are broken, remember the song when we decide? It's only when the times that when we are really broken. You know, Christianity is not about being perfect. Of course, it encourages us to be perfect because our, our God is perfect, but it is the process of being perfect. Christianity is not holding, being able to hold everything together in your life perfectly. 
But it is, Christianity is about a God who is able to hold the fragments and pieces of our lives perfectly together. Amen? Amen. This woman was called a prostitute. And some scholars say that she was not a prostitute. But regardless of that, because of God's forgiveness, Christ's forgiveness of her sin, she was able to give the best. Binasag niya ni Mary at wala na siyang itinira. She did not give, leave anything behind for herself. Luke chapter 9 verse 62 says, Jesus said to him, Anyone who starts to plow and then keeps looking back is of no use for the kingdom of God. There will always be a point of no return. It is when we are being broken before God. So rejoice, brothers and sisters in the Lord. If you are experiencing brokenness because God, and you allow God to work in your life, He will and bring back the pieces together again. The third principle of the giving of a disciple is giving with no regrets. Okay, I want you to notice this. In John chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany. And then in Mark chapter 14, verse 1, it says, Now the Passover and feast of unleavened bread were only two days away. Now some people would say, some scholars would say, these were two different Marys. But if they were just one Mary, then imagine that she came six days before, and then two days again before. Of course, in two different houses. Now, when we talk about no regret, it means that God is on brings... Could you please read with me? Okay. In the Gospel of Mark, those who were present criticized Mary for wasting a year's wages instead of giving it to the poor. And then we find in the Gospel of John that Judas Iscariot criticized Mary for wasting a year's wages instead of giving it to the poor. Okay? Now I want you to understand, I want us to understand one thing. That when we talk about giving, it's giving without consideration of criticism. Giving without concern for criticism. There is no regret. There should be no regret when we give. Whenever we accept it or not, we live our life trying to please others. We live our life trying to please others. And I think there's nothing wrong with pleasing others because it is a sign of what? Pleasing others is a sign of what? It is a sign of respect and love. You want to please others because you respect them and you love them. Amen? And we want to please our parents. We want to please our family members. We want to please our children. Who else do we want to please? Our? Come on, let me out. Our? Sino pa yung mga gusto po natin i-please? Our friends, our colleagues, our spouse, our boss, our members. As a pastor, we want to please our members. As members, you want to please your pastor, your spouse. But if we start to confuse our worth, the value of our life, in response, then our point of reference for our value becomes directly proportional to their approval. Meaning to say, yung value ng buhay natin, the worth of our life, ang tingin na lang natin kung gaano kahalaga ang buhay natin is kung ano yung sasabihin niya sa atin in response to the way that we please them. Now, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, it says, please read with me. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I am still trying to please men, I will not be a servant of There is nothing wrong with pleasing others because of the society of respect and love. But our work, our value, comes not through the approval of men, but through the approval of the only 
That's why when you stand here, there is there is a sense, meron po tayong sense na gusto natin i-please yung crowd. There's no stuff of wrong with that. But beyond that, because Mary, what she did, she wasn't thinking of what people would say about her, about her condition, her little woman that she had, and the way that she gave a year's wages worth of perfume, but she was only thinking of the recipient of all that she had to give. Now, the verse that we have in our program is found in Luke chapter 7, verse 40 to 47. And remember that this is the, another incident of a woman named Mary who came to the house of a Pharisee by the name of Simon and did the exact thing that we were talking about in the incident. Mugasan niya, gamit ang perfume. Pero ngayon, ang, gina ang ginawa niya is sa ulo naman. Sa ulo naman, pinore out yung perfume. And listen to what Simon was thinking. What was Simon thinking? He said, Ang sana, nangihinayan siya. Sabi niya, if this person was a prophet, he would know what kind of reputation this woman had. You know, remember David? David wasn't thinking of his reputation when he worshipped God all out. Sometimes, we are so afraid of what people will think about us when we share our faith. We are so afraid of our reputation. Let God take care of our reputation. Let's do what we can for God. And He will take care of our reputation. Just as what He rewarded this woman. He said that there will come a time when the gospel is preached that the story of this woman, Mary, will be preached to all nations as my word is preached. Brothers and sisters of the Lord, what was the response of the Lord Jesus Christ? Hindi malakas yung pagkakasabi ni Simon. Simon didn't utter these thoughts loudly. But the Lord Jesus Christ knew what Simon was thinking. And he said, what did the Lord Jesus Christ say? He used a parable. He used a story. He said, Simon, I have something to tell you. And Simon said, tell me, teacher. And he said, two people owe money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them, neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who has the bigger debt forgiven. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, you have judged correctly. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown whoever, listen, listen, whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Judas and the others look at the value of the perfume. But Mary looked at the value of her. What did Mary look at? The value of her life. That she was forgiven and saved and deemed the recipient worthy of all the value, more than the value of the perfume. Maybe there is a reason why many Christians live so poor spiritual lives? It is because we have never realized the depths from which we have been saved. Who gives more? Let me ask you the question. Who gives more? The one who is more blessed or the one who loves more? Amen. We can give without loving. It's very familiar phrase, but we cannot love without Giving. Brothers and sisters, the Lord, let me introduce you to a man named William Borden, and I would like to close with this. This man was born at the turn of the 19th century. He was born in 1887. 
And this man came from a rich family. He was heir, or one of the heirs, 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 he was one of the heirs of a uh, dairy company, a big dairy company in Chicago in the 1900s. And his family was very rich. But he gave up the privilege of being rich. When he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ at the age of seven years old, when, her mo when his mother brought him to church, he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ at a tender age of seven years old. And from then on, he became active in ministry, doing Bible studies, evangelism, discipleships. And later on, after he graduated from Yale and Princeton, he became a missionary to the Muslims of Northern China. And it was during his training in Egypt to learn the Arabic language in order to be able to be an effective communicator of the gospel to the Muslims in Northern China that he died of cerebral or spiral meningitis during his training at the tender age of 25. Many people would look at him and his life and say, what a waste. Sayang. That is what a waste in Tagalog. Sayang, what a waste. He had all his life and future before him. But it was discovered in his diary later on that he wrote these words regarding his commitment to Christ. He said, no regret, no reserve. Can you read with me, please? No reserve, no regrets. That was written in his diary. And on his, uh, how would you call that? Lapida. Ano ba yung lapida sa Tagalog, sa English? Tombstone. The epitaph was this. Can you read with me, please? He rose and pursued all and followed him, kindly, affectionately, brotherly love, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, instant in prayer, communicating with the necessity of saints, in honor preparing others. Apart from faith in Christ, there is no explanation. How can we explain? There is no explanation for such a life. You know why there is no explanation for such a life as this? Because it doesn't need explanation. You know what we call reversing of the norm? Reversing of the norm is when the normal becomes abnormal and the abnormal becomes normal. Case in point, why are, why are we so surprised when in the Philippines, you know, we, we, we hear of taxi drivers returning huge amounts of money and laptops and other gadgets. And sometimes they are even rewarded. They are put on the newspaper as an example. Why? Because these are the things that should be the norm, but they no longer are. These are the things that already have become abnormal. And that's why we celebrate these things which are supposed to be normal. We look at the life of young Gordon and we say, what a waste. But is it really? I don't believe so. Alam niyo kung bakit? He lived his life to the full. He lived his life with no reserve, with no retreat, and no regrets. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I would like to close with this. When we come before the Lord and we say that we are His disciples and followers and when we say that we are Christians, what is the true test of Christianity? The true test of Christianity is that we are able to give everything, even our life. No reserve, no return, no retreat, no surrender, or also surrender. And the last is no regrets. 
What if? Wag naman sana. What if a terrorist group suddenly burst in to this fellowship, to this meeting? And said, those who will not convert to another religion will be all put to death. Think about it. I used to have nightmares about that. How would I as a pastor react to that? Ano ba yung gagawin ko? E, Pilipino, practical ako. Di magpukonvert ako. Okay? Tapos, pagka umalis na sila, nakabalik na ako sa Pilipinas, mag-reconvert ulit ako. Tapos, first John 1 9, we confess our sins, He's faithful and just, to forgive us and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. Di po ba? It is a struggle. But it should not be anymore because what is the norm? The norm for us is that when we have surrendered our life, when we are Christians, there is no longer reserve 